Hello, my name is Dr. Hart Pinto and welcome to this JHP Medical Lecture mini-series on the Acute Surgical Emergencies. This is Lecture 2 on Perforated Viscous. A perforated viscous is the tearing or rupturing of any hollow organ, which may be the stomach or the bowel. The perforation provides an entry point for the flow of digestive juices and air into the previously sterile abdominal cavity. This causes a pneumoperitoneum. There are many numerous causes for perforated viscous, including trauma, peptic ulcer disease, ischemia of the bowel, diverticular disease, inflammatory bowel disease, especially when associated with a megacolon, a Meckel's diverticulitis, cancer, and iatrogenic in the form of complications from colonoscopies and OGDs. Patients typically complain of severe abdominal pain which is worse on movement. You often find that the patient is lying flat on the bed and is refusing to move. The pain may initially have been localised and then has become more general as the peritonitis has developed. Patients may also complain of shoulder tip pain due to the irritation of the phrenic nerve supplying the diaphragm. On examination, we find that these patients are clinically peritonitic. They have a rigid abdomen with guarding and tenderness. They may also have a fever, tachycardia and hypotension, which is an autonomic reaction. As the peritoneal cavity continues to fill with air and digestive fluids, you get a loss of the liver dullness on percussion of the abdomen. Early resuscitation is imperative in the management of these patients. We want to establish early IV access and we can give a stat of IV crystalloid either 0.9% saline or Hartman solution if the patient is hypotensive or tachycardic. We want to send a full blood count, our urea and electrolyte levels, our liver function tests, a coagulation profile and a group and save in preparation for the upcoming surgery. We want to catheterize the patient and commence a fluid balance chart so that we have a clear indication of end organ perfusion. Finally, we want to make sure that the patient is nil by mouth so it's appropriate for them to be intubated and anaesthetized. Once our patient is stable, we can go on to request a number of investigations. An erect chest x-ray can sometimes give a clear diagnosis showing free air under the diaphragm, the pneumoperitoneum. In patients where the diagnosis is not confirmed by the chest x-ray or the patient's history is ambiguous, we may request a CT abdomen which can give the surgeons more indication of the original cause of the perforation. The next slide shows an image of a patient with a perforated viscous and it's clearly visible that there is air under the diaphragm on the right hand side where we would expect the liver to be present. This is a diagnostic finding in perforated viscous. Okay, so we've confirmed our diagnosis. What is the definitive management? So, we need to start the patient on broad spectrum IV antibiotics, something in the order of kefuroxine and metronidazole or IV tazacin is appropriate and we need to plan for an early laparotomy where the abdomen can be washed out with copious amounts of fluid and the source of the perforation identified and repaired as appropriate. In some scenarios it may not be practical to take the patient to theatre and a conservative or palliative management may be required. In this event we try to keep the patient as calm and comfortable as possible. As always, please leave your comments and suggestions below. If you like the video, please like it, as it gives us the support to continue producing new medical lectures to aid in upcoming exams.